does internal resistance in battery cells even matter and does it have anything to do with the actual capacity? A year ago I actually bought a battery internal resistance meter to figure it out if it actually had anything to do with the actual capacity. Like most people at first I was probably like, hmm, maybe I can just use this and measure the resistance. But for some reason that really doesn't work. I'm not that big resistance guy but you will not get any like good readings. And that is most likely because you're measuring micro ohms, not milli ohms. Here you have mega ohms, kilo ohms, kilo ohms, ohms, ohms. So even if you go to the lowest setting, you will not really get anything, anything useful. You need a tester that can actually work in these ranges. And another thing I noticed about this is the dual plugs. I don't know why, but it. I think this is kind of necessary to be able to measure internal resistance accurately because this is a feature on all internal resistance meters that seems to be of any good quality. So you will need to get a special measuring in instrument for measuring this. You might also have a tester which is showing internal resistance. It's not accurate, basically not useful at all because it's way off. Most likely you need to have two connection points to the cells to be able to measure this. So this value, I don't know where it gets it, but it's always off. And the reason I think it's faulty is because it's never the same twice on the same cell. Yeah, some might be lower voltage, but this one should be at least voltage. Here you can see internal resistance is 93. We change slot. And then internal resistance changed to 71, so it's not reading just the internal resistance. There's also a lot of resistance on the contacts and in the electronics and stuff like that. And uh, here we have 23, so now the, it telling me this cell is like new. Let's go back here and says, is it says 93? Now, now it's 28, so the internal resistance meter on the Litocala is completely false and the same thing goes for any capacity tester. I will also test this at MC3000 from SkyRC. So let's test the actual resistance of these cells. Let me just test the voltage first. I don't, this is not dependent on voltage, so it really doesn't matter, but if there's no voltage, 1.6. 0 0.14 0 0.18 11 06 oh we have one good so and here we have resistance and we have three settings this one was better we move them around and see no fluctuation it's 38.5 so when a cell is new it most likely has under 20 when it's really old and really worn it has over a hundred so we cannot just say this one has 80% capacity left. It's likely it could have, from what I understand, I'm gonna paint a picture of the inside of a battery. I believe it's like a dirty aquarium. When we are testing the internal resistance now, the electricity is taking the path of least resistance. And I'm guessing this one is just sending like one millivolt through. So we know that if we wanted to use like one millivolt through this, the best path in this cell has 38.4. But if you were to pull two amps through this cell, it might not be able to do that. Which yes, because you get the low resistance value, it doesn't mean the whole cell can still handle the full amp. You will actually need to test it under load. But here you can get a good understanding of um, the maximum. Let's go to the next cell. This one had lower voltage. Yeah, maybe you need voltage to be able to figure this out. And 1.0.1 volt is not enough. Here we have a fully charged cell. And the internal resistance can of course be different when the cell is fully charged and discharged. This one has 53.5. That's pretty high. So let's try four new cells and I'm guessing all of these will be at least 25 or smaller. Here we have one A123 life before cell. 20.4, that's okay. Here we have Sanyu GA China version 25.5. 20 is a good value, but anything under 30 is usually acceptable. 
yeah here we have 35e and it has really low 13.7 and we have one of these algae cells and it has 21.3 and that's usually the values you get from new unused cells so now i'm gonna see how to do this on mc3000 yeah here it says internal resistance 76 65 87 44 so now we will double check that those are correct i think we'll do better than with the color i'm going with 76 <laughs> 11.5 so and these are tesla model 3 cells uh, ncr 21700t let's test uh, this one then we go to the first shell 205 <laughs> Yeah, it, it's also just uh, random numbers. I don't know why they even put it in there. They must know it's not correct. It's high, 53, but it's not 200. I've never seen cells with 200. That, that's basically it. You cannot test internal resistance in any other way than with a real internal resistance battery analyzer. And there are a lot of them. And we are going to be selling them in the spring in Sweden. So I am going to order some samples and check them against each other. But I think this one is very accurate since I actually tested a lot of the cells after I measured here. A low internal resistance usually means good capacity and, and vice versa. So if you have a lot of cells that need testing and you want to test the good cells first, you want to get to the good stuff, then one of these can come in very, very handy. Or if someone wants to sell you a battery that has never been used and it has a very high internal resistance, you will know that they're most likely lying. So it has a function. It can absolutely not tell capacity, but it can give you a good understanding of the battery's health. And that is useful if you're in the battery industry.